Good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'll take that. Uh, my name's Olivia, and I'm here to welcome you to the Heights this morning. If this is your first time visiting, we're super excited to have you with us today. If this is your first time visiting, we have a gift for you up at guest services. So if you like gifts and you're new, that's definitely a stop for you this morning. Um, first thing, tonight at 6 o'clock, we have a church-wide prayer meeting. And this, tonight we have like a theme for that. And the theme is praising as we pray. And that's tonight at 6 o'clock in the youth building right out back. And what we would like you to do tonight if you come is on a card, um, index card, sheet of paper, whatever you need to do, we want you to bring your favorite Bible verse to prayer meeting tonight if you can do that. So tonight, 6 o'clock, favorite Bible verse in the hangar. Second thing. Men, who likes breakfast of the men here this morning? Breakfast? Okay, great. I love seeing you guys excited. We're having a men's breakfast. Yeah. Y'all like to get up early? Like, you know, it's great. So on October 8th at 8 a.m., we're having men's breakfast. You guys, if you want to do that, are going to sign up at guest services. Not on the app. You're not going to do that. You're going to sign up in person at guest services for men's breakfast. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. All right, last thing, guys. We are so close to reaching our Operation Christmas Child goal. Like, and that's crazy. It's not even October and we're that close to reaching our goal. The only thing we need are 291 bars of soap and 169 washcloths to fill our 3,000 boxes for the year. So if you'd like to help us, like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, not even October. Like, and it's so exciting. Yeah. So if you're out this week and you see bars of soap and or washcloths, grab them, pick them up. Drop them off either in the office or there's a little box for Operation Christmas Child, and we'll be so ready to fill those boxes in November. Um, we're excited to have you this morning, so let's stand up and worship with the worship team. Hey Amen. We're glad you're here this morning. Let's sing this out together.
the Lord some praise. Amen.
God, we thank you, Lord, that we could come here and praise you. God, you are so good. We thank you. Sometimes, Lord, all we need to do is speak your name, Jesus. Lord, and you hear us. God, you hear our hearts. Lord, I pray that as we go into hearing your word, God, that we'll open our hearts to what you have to say to us. God, that we'll take it with us through this week. We thank you again. We love you. In Jesus' name. Well, let's give a hallelujah hand clap to the Lord. What do you think about that? Hey, amen. He is good. God is so good. It's unreal. Sometimes when I think about just what all he's done for us is amazing to me. And uh, so thankful that we can gather together and worship God and, and lift up his name and praise. And uh, uh, thank you for singing. Uh, I could actually hear you back there. That's a good thing, see. Uh, we want to take that roof off this place with singing. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, I want to start today uh, reading some scripture, just to kind of set the foundation here for what I want to talk about this morning. The first is in John 16, 33. And Jesus is speaking here, and this is familiar to all of you, but I want to remind you of it. I have said these things to you that in me... Jesus, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You see that? In the world, you'll have what? Tribulation. That's right. But he says, I have overcome the world. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, John, Apostle John, who's on the Isle of Patmos, because of his preaching and teaching on Jesus, makes some comments that we need to be aware of. He says this in verse 9, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and kingdom of, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the Isle of Patmos on account of the word of God and testimony of Jesus. You see that? Your brother, he's talking to Christians, he says, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus. If you're going to follow Jesus, this is some of the things that follow him. And then in Acts 14, uh, verses 21 through 22, talking about the disciples preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, it says, when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they turned to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. How many tribulations we have to get into the kingdom? Many. I mean, we've got this idea somewhere out there that uh, if you become a Christian, you're never going to have any persecution, never going to have any problems, no suffering. you got all the money that you'll ever need and, uh, you know, you just... So $1,000 in the Pastor Raymond's bank account and he'll give you 10000 back, uh, you know. You buy me a BMW and God will give you one, you know, it's that kind of thing. And, and the reality is it's the farthest thing from the truth. Life is a battle, right? It's a battle. And uh, it takes courage to stand for Jesus Christ and sometimes even stand alone in him in times of tribulation. Tribulation being stressful times. Uh, it's the stressful times. It can some almost be crushing uh, with stress and trouble and trials. And more and more, I am convinced as I stand here before you today that we're going to find it necessary to learn how to stand true in Jesus Christ and even alone in this day and age in which you and I are living. And if it's necessary now as the days uh, grow darker, and I think 
unless Jesus interferes here, something happens, I think they're going to grow darker. I think it'll be, uh, if it's dark now, how much greater do you think it's going to be for your grandchildren or great-grandchildren? I mean, you know, I'm, in this, I'm thinking this all the time. I'm looking at my grandchildren and how old they are, and I'm saying, if we're this crazy right now, if we've got this kind of stuff going on now, what's it going to be like if something doesn't happen in 10 years um, uh, in there? And so it, it really, we, I think we need to learn how in Christ to stand in our faith and in the truth uh, not just in our, not in our stubbornness or our narrow-mindedness, that's not what I'm saying, but to stand uh, alone in Christ in our faith and the truth. We need to learn how to stand strong in Jesus Christ and uh, stand up for Jesus Christ and the principles and the truth of God's Word. And so I want to go to the book of Daniel, and I want to look at some lessons and, and see how that Faith in the fire can be and is, to me, faith on fire. And so I'm going to begin here with verses 1 through 7 of Daniel 3. He says, Now King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits, whose breadth was 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And then the satraps, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates and all the officials of the province gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O peoples, nations and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and uh, every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, uh, lyre, trigon, harp, and bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, if you grew up in church or you went to vacation Bible school uh, in, uh, you know, when you're growing up or whatever, you know this story, the count of the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And and they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Uh, and these three men uh, would not obey the command that we just read to worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and so they were thrown into this fiery furnace. As one old preacher said, they wouldn't budge, they wouldn't bow, and they wouldn't burn. Uh, and they came out of that fiery furnace. And so this account that we're looking at here this morning is not simply a record of what God has done, okay? It's not just fact and record and history of what God has done, but it is the account of what God is doing right now. God doing right now. It's not merely a record of what God has said in the past. It's what he is saying right now. Hebrews 13, 7 and 8 says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same when? Yesterday and today and forever. So we're, we're, God's not changing with the winds. He's not stopped being God just because we're in 2022 and we're the enlightened generation, so to speak. It's not that way. And, and I think that um, the way that I'm perceiving things headed we may find ourselves very soon in a fiery furnace, if you will, a, uh, in incendiary circumstances that uh, some trial by fire that may be coming our way, and it'll be necessary for us, like these young men 
that we've read about here to stand firm in Christ uh, and often when we're in the minority, uh, standing on the principles and truth of God's holy word. Uh, but there were three this day in this uh, story who would not bow and they, weren't, they wouldn't burn and they stood alone in faith in the one true God and they were thrown into a fiery furnace. This book of Daniel is a history book, but it's also a book of prophecy. Some of those prophecies have already happened. Some of them have yet to happen. Um, and Nebuchadnezzar here is a good illustration, if you will, of the Antichrists, plural, who were, are, and will be in this world. 1 John 2, 18, children, he's speaking to Christians, children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. Many Antichrists. This world's got many in it already. It's been throughout history. It's still coming in that sense. And he's a picture of what that can look like, if you will. Because the Antichrist are just what they are, against Christ, against the gospel, against the church, against the truth of God's word. They believe they are little g gods. They believe that. And, but instead, they're the devil's false messiahs. They're the ones who come promising that, you know, you do things my way and everything in your life's going to be so much better because we have the truth. We have that corner market on there. But they're evil beasts. I'm just telling you, they are men and women of sin. They're, they're Jezebels that we read about in the Scripture that work so well in Revelation with the Antichrist there to lead the church into sin itself. And uh, they are wicked liars, lawless ones, deceivers. And they believe that these individuals believe they're smarter, that they're better than anyone else and the but the truth is not in them not at all and they use any means to guard their lies they don't want anybody to get behind the lies and and they want everybody to promote those lies and those ways and so to believers john in his first letter first john 2 says this do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the love is passing away, the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. You see, he cautions us not to get too attached to the things of this world because it's easier for the enemy to deceive us. Now, in that passage I just read, he said, do not love the world. The word love there is the word that is reserved for us how we would respond in love to God. It's, it's a love that values, that holds in high regard, and it's the kind of love that the Holy Spirit gives us as believers in order to love God. And, and when we, so when we say love God, love others, that's what we're talking about. We want to love with a Christ-like love. And yet here John says, don't take that love. He's talking to Christians here. He's not talking to unbelievers. He said, do not love the things of the world. He's talking to Christians. Don't give the love that should be reserved to God to this world. Don't get tied up. In, in, in the things of this world to the point you're giving your whole attention, which is part of that love, to the world and not to him. Because all the things this world wants you and me to get tied up in are passing. They're not from God. They're from this world. And this world is passing away. And, and, but he says, whoever does the will of God, whoever, whoever keeps in that, hey, they're going to abide forever. You see, the more that we see the spirit of Antichrist in the world, the more we realize that we really are living in the last times. 
Matter of fact, the Bible tells us the last times began with Jesus' resurrection. We've been in the last times. Paul says it over and over again. He talks about it in there all through the Bible. These are the last days. I just read a verse to you that said that. Reality is that we're moving that way. There's a lot of people who say Jesus is coming sometime between now and the 29th of September. Um, matter of fact, one guy I read, he found a secret code in Revelation where the rapture was going to happen on the 22nd of September. Now, the Bible says that the Lord will come when you expect not, so it wasn't like I just said, well, I'm not going to expect it because I want him to come. But the reality is Jesus says no one knows when the Father's coming but the Father, right? When Jesus is coming but the Father. And so the reality is there's a lot of stuff that goes on here and, and predictions, uh, and, and the reason is this, because they see the world putting pressure on us as believers to move off the truth of God and buy into the lies and make it our truth and, and, and be a part of a, a whole a reboot. And, and so it's a great idea. Jesus is coming, we're going to get out of here, and we won't have to go through it. Don't count on that. Count on maybe God needs you to stand in the truth of Almighty God in times of peril. So there's three specific things I want us to, to see here from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refused to bow to the king's image. They weren't going to buy into a system. Uh, we need to know it. I think we need to rem remember it and learn how to stand strong in Christ and faith in, in times of tribulation and times of trouble um, uh, as it is. And I want you to notice the pressure they face because we face pressure, right? Uh, they faced extreme pressure, these three. Nebuchadnezzar, this Old Testament picture, if you will, of what an antichrist would look like, made an image of himself, and he set it up, and he wanted everyone to worship that image or die, be killed. And if the people of God in the days of Nebuchadnezzar had to stand sometimes alone in their faith in God, then we in this day of mounting pressure of uh, to conform and threats of prosecution and persecution, we have to stand alone as well. But God, uh, it, it's only going to get worse. But God, it's only going to get worse. Um, I, I just think that the world, some is waking up. I mean, if you pray, you pray for the ladies in Iran. You pray for the women in Iran. They're trying to break through of an oppression that is nothing akin to treating a woman as if she is a, an animal that you dispose of when you're tired of them and you, it's okay to beat them to death if you have to. Um, and they're trying to break free from that and they need our prayers as well. But we're living in a world, bud, where I'm telling you right now, you, you got to know there's laws being passed. You know why? Because if you stand on the truth of God's word, you can be prosecuted. And persecution. And it, it scares me a little bit because I see a lot of Christians poo pooing that. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Let's all get all scared. And, uh, I'm not asking anybody to get scared. Don't, don't leave here today. Say, Pastor Raymond tried to scare us. No, I'm trying to get you ready to know what you can do and overcome no matter what comes your way. That's what I want. That's what I want. And they had a lot of pressure, uh, such as. In here, you can see emotional incitement. You remember in verse 5, it's talking about all kinds of music. He had set up music. When you hear the music, you hear it. Now, the Babylonian orchestra began to play, uh, and uh, we can only imagine the majesty of the music they were playing that had to be approved by Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, how many of you know music touches emotion, right? I mean... Uh, it's not just in church. Go hear your favorite country singer or your favorite pop singer or favorite rapper. 
Uh, I, I've been there and I've looked and I've seen people before that wouldn't even raise their hand in church. They out there going, yeah, yeah, yay, man. Or go over to the ball game today. Watch happens. Everybody's dressed, ready to go, right? They got their colors on and they're cheering it all, man, and they'll fight you. They'll fight you if you say something bad. And every day you see a video on, on the media where somebody's jacked somebody else, even a little kid turned around and popped a man in the belly because he said something against his team. You see, music and, and or anything to get our emotions going, music can help that. It really is. And so you have to be careful of what the music is intended for, right? And so there is this emotional incitement. Uh, that's what goes on in the news media right now. There's so much emotional incitement trying to get at what makes you mad. If they could get you mad enough to get in your car and drive over somebody and kill them because of who they, you think they are, they've succeeded. If they can get you to hate other people, hate's an emotion, isn't it? What hate? See? He wanted them to feel the majesty of worship. This is how great this really is. And he has, the devil knows how to take the power of music and use it to his advantage to enforce his plans. And he wants to capture, if he can, a whole generation just by music. And then there's social, what I call social inducement. Um, in Daniel 3, 2 through 4, if you notice, he got all the governors, uh, uh, lieutenant governors. He got the magistrates, the judges. He got everybody in the government. He said, listen, you better show up. And you better, you better lead the way. This is our plan. This is what we're going to do. And so it began to grow. And so, you know, you can get other people involved in that. And and they have power, and uh, you believe like I do, and I'll give you $50 an hour if you come along with me. And the next thing you know, you've got all these people that say, bow or burn, right? This is what they were doing. Everybody was expected to fall in line, and everybody, it seemed, was doing it. But have, have you noticed today, and I'm talking about today, that if you don't do what people say you, you, you're told to do or say the things that you should be compliant with, even if it's a lie, then you're looked upon as an extremist or, and want to be dealt with severely. It's, it, you can be what, you know the word today is what? Canceled. Canceled. Don't ever say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me because you'll be canceled. Because that's not, that's not fair to other people. Reality is we're being told that. We're moving cl closely and very quickly to a global reset. Uh, you hear more and more the World Economic Forum are talking like gods. I, I listened to them, and they were talking like because we hold, we hold the future of the world in our hands. We're the smart ones. We're the ones who've got the money. And they went on and on, and I thought, dear father. <laughs> I mean, really, this, this was like, who are you? You're, you're not even an American. Who, who are you to be all of a sudden you're going to do this and do this? But you see, it has nothing. No God is involved in that. Instead, it's we're the gods. We're the gods. It's a tragic kind of thing. And so that leads to, you know, they stand with propaganda and they'll put that out, the gullibility, so that people will believe it. I, I, I'm still mystified, you know, when we first started going to Ukraine, I did in the 90s and talking to people there. And one of the things they said, I said, how did you get caught up in this? And they said, media, news media. I said, what? They said, yeah. I said, they just, told, they just said what they were told to say and so the people never heard the, told the, heard the truth. They only heard what they were supposed to hear. He said, but my daddy, this, this man that I'm talking about, he said, my daddy had a secret radio. And he could tune in to Europe 
and he knew the truth. And so we tried to spread it. And so they drafted me into the army and sent me to Siberia to serve there, to get me out of here. You see, it's a propaganda. If you want to get, you've got to have somebody that can mass spread what they want to be the truth. And it goes on. And that leads to government enforcement. In verse 6, he says, whoever doesn't bend, doesn't bow, what's going to happen to them? Right here. Going to prison for 20 years because you didn't, you didn't run your mouth. You, you ran your mouth too much. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's happening. It's happening. But we're too tied up in Republican and Democrat politics to be the believers that God's called us to be. And if we're not careful, we're going to follow a party right to hell. It's Jesus that is our salvation. It is Jesus that is the truth. Doesn't mean we're not involved in it. It means we better be ready to do what we need to do and to stand firm as we do. It, it, it's there. The, the, in this day, Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to squeeze everyone into their own mold so that they could only stand for what was approved or be charged. And they would threaten them with punishment, death, just like today, to counsel anyone who goes against the new truths that are in the way of an agenda. John 16, 1 and 2. Jesus says, I've said to all these things to you to keep you from falling away, from getting discouraged and, and quitting. They will put you out of the synagogues, out of the places of worship. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he's offering service to God. Look to Canada. Happened just last year. Well, he'll never come here. I, but God, is what I'm thinking. And then there's spiritual defilement. Daniel 3, 6, he talks about it. And it shouldn't really surprise us because in Ephesians 6, verses 11 and 12, Paul says, put on all of God's armor so that, look at this, you will be able to stand, how? Firm, right? Stand firm against all strategies of the devil. And I talked about that this past Wednesday. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You see, our enemy, our enemy or our enemies, these supernatural evil beings, they were behind everything that you see going on here in Daniel 3. They were behind that. They were the ones who enticed them. Remember, what, what did the enemy say to Eve. Oh, he knows when you eat it, you shall be like God. You see, this is what he said. If you'll do this, everybody will bow down and you'll be God. You see, there's always that spiritual defilement. And so he comes uh, in this way, and he, he is behind the trials and the tribulations of our day. And he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily want Death, as much as he wants people discipled. He wants people to follow his truth. He wants people to follow his ways, to believe like he believes and his truth. Uh, and so he wants to be worshipped. And, and the Antichrist that come wants to be worshipped. Um, in Revelation 13, it talks about uh, power being given uh, to make war with the saints and overcome them. And this refers to government enforcement. All these pressures are in the world every day, and we're going to have to learn to stand against them. So what do we learn? How do we do it? Well, we look at their faith. What was it? Well, you want to look at the faith they followed. First of all, we look at here. Look at verse 13 through 18 of Daniel 3. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought so they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you, will, you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I've set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe layer, and a trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I've made, well and good. But if you do not worship, 
you shall be immediately cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God, little g, who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of the hand, out of your hand, O king. But if not, if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. You see, that's the spirit of the Antichrist within Nebuchadnezzar. He had contempt for God. I see it more and more, more and more contempt for God and what his word says. But it didn't matter to them, did it? It didn't matter to them. It really didn't. It didn't intimidate them at all. That's what's amazing to me. It didn't intimidate them because they had faith. And it wasn't just a head faith. It was a life-controlling faith. And it was a faith that was uh, in the one true sovereign God. And so they said, we have no need to answer you in this matter. The, the half committed, think about this, the half committed kind of living out of the flesh Christian, what, 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 you, what do you think they'd have said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They'd have said, I'll just go along to go along. Don't cause no, don't cause no ruckus, you know? They would have said, man, don't you realize it's better just to compromise a little bit and then you'll stay around a little bit and you can do a whole lot more good in that. Just don't stir the waters. Don't, don't, don't be stubborn and stand up. After all, aren't Christians supposed to get along with everybody? Hmm. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, where's your, where's your, play the music. No. Uh -uh. These men stood alone in overcoming the pressure, as severe as it was, to conform. And they did it by their faith in the one and only God. And so theirs was a settled faith, a foundational faith, Daniel 3.16. They, they didn't have to think it over. Did you notice this? They didn't say, can you give us a couple of days to think this over a little bit? Uh, and maybe we want to talk it over with some of our friends, kind of see how they, how they react. Maybe we want to go on, kind of look into, you know, on the computer and kind of see in the chat rooms what people may think about it. Uh, Twitter, you know, Twitter's the, the genius of it. We want to see what they say. They didn't have to ask the king for more time. They didn't have to say, well, let me pray about it. Let, let us just pray about it. Guys, you agree? We'll get together, have a prayer meeting, we'll decide what, what we're going to do on this. Is that... Is that okay with you? They, they didn't ask that. They didn't ask that uh, at all. They, they, they had God's word that they had inside of them. It was down in their heart, and they already knew what was right and what was wrong. They knew what was truth and what was lie. You know, it's too much of the time I think we spend way too much time trying to decide what to do about this or do about that. Man, is it, if it glorifies God, have at it. If it don't, you better stay away with it, away from it. Is it confirmed in God's Word? Does God say, this is, this is the way it goes? If it's not, stay away from it. You see, it's that, that way. One big decision, someone said, will keep us from a lot of little decisions. Once you make a decision, I'm going to go, I'm going to go along with the crowd. It will affect every other little decision that you make once you make that. And once you make it, you get so deep in, you don't know how to get out because the devil heaps what? Guilt and shame and embarrassment and all those things in there. And we just need to say, hey, come on. God loves you. He's going to help you. We're going to, we're going to go overcome, right? And so theirs was a settled faith. Theirs also was a strong faith in verse 17. Look at this. They, they were taken down to be thrown into the fire. I mean, this is where you better have a pamper on. Well, you don't need one. You're going to be burned up anyway. But, you know, this is a pretty rough thing. It's a strong faith. Why? Because they knew our God is able. 
Folks, do you know that God is able to take care of you and me no matter what comes our way? Do you know this morning that there is nothing that can come against you that God can't see you through? Do you understand that God, if he chooses not to deliver you from the fire, will be the first face you see when you breathe your last breath and to be no more troubled by the trouble of this world? Our God is able. This is what they knew. He was able. We need to believe it. When so, who, who, he said, who, who, what God's going to deliver you? I'll tell you who, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to deliver me. Psalm 50, 15. This is what God said through the psalmist. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Let, let's just keep that up a minute. Let's read this together. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you, right? I will deliver you, and you shall what? Glorify. Glorify me. That's right. This is the word of God. That's the word of God. He will deliver us. He will deliver us in and through the fire. Sometimes it's in the fire. Sometimes it's through the fire. Sometimes he'll, he'll save us from the fire. Uh, but have faith in God, because Why? God cannot fail. Stop looking at God as if he's like you. You're not, he's not like you. He is so far beyond us. If it wasn't for Jesus and his word, we'd have no clue how to get our mind around who he is. Nothing is too hard for him. So theirs was a strong faith, but it's also a steadfast faith. In Daniel 3.18, he said, if not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, God can deliver us, but if not... It doesn't mean that God is not able to deliver. That's not what they're saying. They had no doubt that God had the power to save them from the fire. But they also knew that if in God's sovereignty they died in that fire, they still were not going to bow down and worship a false god and, and live a lie. They weren't going to do it. Does your faith have an if not clause in it? Or are you only serving God as long as things go good for you? As long as God's got you got going, your life going, is it all good? Or do you have it if not? Well, God, if you don't deliver us from this, I'm still hanging in there. I'm still standing for you. You know, if God doesn't deliver you, will you still serve him? Will you still be plugging along in there and serve him? Hebrews 11, 32 to 39 and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of a fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were sown, stoned. They were sown in two. They were killed with a the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what they promised. Did not receive what was promised in God's word. But you know what they did? They never flinched. They stayed strong knowing who it is and who we serve. If God doesn't give us what we want, listen to me, folks. If God doesn't give you and me what, what we want, he'll give you something better. He'll give you something better. He really will. This is part of who he is. We, we just somehow think that, and we've got this idea that's been perpetuated today. If you just have enough faith, you'll always be delivered. If you don't have faith, that's the only reason you're sick. That's the only reason you got that. That is the biggest BS I've heard. Bad stuff. <laughs> just in case. I saw some of your minds flashing. You sorry rascals. You be up here at the altar in just a minute. It's bad stuff. It really is. 
because that passage I just read, those were people that were not delivered in a way where we'd have said they got an A on their report card of faith, right? They wouldn't have got, hey, that's what I want to follow. These guys out here are getting sawn in two. Yeah, put me in that line. I want in that one. Hey, living in caves with sheepskin on, that's me. No, uh uh. We, we want that thing where we're riding high and mighty. No, listen, just because we're believers doesn't mean that we're going to always be delivered. And so the real question is in here do you have it if not in there? If you don't, that's, I'm still going to serve you. You see, these three men knew that God was able to deliver them. But if he did not keep them out of the fiery furnace, or keep them alive in the furnace, to them that was okay. Why? Because they still weren't going to bow. They knew who it was they were serving. They knew what his word said. We're not going to bow. You see, folks, it's one thing to have faith to escape. But do you have faith to endure? Do you have faith to endure? what this world, this life that we're living may bring. I mean, it's one thing to be sick and desire to be healed. But it takes greater faith to me to be sick and not be healed and still serve God. Still serve God and praise God. You see, our God is able in and through Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit to deliver us but if he doesn't deliver, it's not because he can't. If you go back in the scripture in Acts 12, um, you'll see that James was put in prison by Herod and, and beheaded because he was standing for the, for the gospel. But Peter was delivered, right? James beheaded, Peter delivered. He was put in prison, but he was delivered. You see, this is... God is sovereign. He knows. Remember what I, I've been saying, if you've been following some of these things, our story is a part of a bigger story. This is God's story. We, we are part of God's story. And, and, and he has something that he knows what's best. It may not, he may not always deliver us from our trials and, and our pressures and tribulations and circumstances. And if he doesn't, we need to keep standing in faith in Christ because faith is not just receiving from God what we want it's accepting what God gives us it's accepting what God gives us there's a God in heaven who's going to take care of us whether we're in the fire through the fire or getting ready to go into it Romans 8 listen to this who shall separate us from the love of God shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we are being killed all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things in all these things go back up there and look at them tribulation distress persecution famine nakedness danger in sword no in all these things we are more more than conquerors through him who loved us Can't separate us from him. He's right there with us enduring it. And, and this is the thing, because they had a strong faith and they were steadfast in that, look at the presence they found in that thing. Let, let's look at that scripture, 19, uh, 319. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered a furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace was overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished when he saw they had been cremated and no longer existed. Is that what it said? Oh, that's that modern translation. I'm sorry. Let me go back and get the regular. 
Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, didn't we cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men unbound, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they're not heard, and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Yeah. Bingo. You know what I'm saying? Bound up, thrown into the fire. The furnace was heated seven times hotter than it usually was, burned up the men who threw them in, and they're walking around in the middle of the fire. Nebuchadnezzar looks in here and he sees a fourth man in the fire. There's always another man in the fire. You're not alone. You're sitting in that eyes of you in it. Listen to me. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're going to stand for the truth of God's word regardless of what happens. You're not alone. He's always there. It's the presence of God. And uh, he, there, there was a cleansing going on of this children of God. It's a great picture. Notice this. The bonds were burned away. That which bound them were burned off. And in Daniel 3, it's Daniel 3.25. And the Bible says there wasn't even a smell of smoke on them. Now, I don't know about you. I can hardly go into a convenience store without coming out smelling like I've done my smoke my third pack. You know what I'm saying? You just walk out and you're just like, whew. And I actually said it right down here one time. Uh, there's a boy out there, and I walked out, and that cloud come around me. And I said, boy, if you'll take one more puff, I'll get my pack in today. He said, Phew. he came to church next week, so that's good. But if you notice this, the only thing, and I love this. It's not original to me, but I like it. The only thing that were burned off of these three were what the world had put on them. Look out. The only thing that was burned off of them was what the world put on them. Great David. You see, that's purified by fire, right? I mean, that's, that's the reason I say it. Faith in the fire is faith on fire. Because when you're standing strong in the Lord Jesus Christ and you won't bow and you won't bend and you won't, I'm telling you, you won't burn. It'll burn off of you, but you will stand sterling clear to who Jesus Christ really is. That's the power. You see, when we go through the fire, God oftentimes is just cleaning away the junk we've accumulated. And the times that we grow are oftentimes when we're put through the fire. And it's then, I think, when our faith burns brighter than the circumstantial fire that we're in. There was, was the presence of the Savior. Folks, Jesus never will be closer to you or me than when we stand firm in him trust in him all the way when we say no matter what i'm standing with jesus if we want jesus to be real to us we need to stop being a sunday morning bench warmer and start standing up for jesus christ you see folks here's the deal there's no stands in the stadium of life where you can sit back there's no sidelines where you can just be a cheerleader you're either in the game on one side or another, or you're not here. <laughs> You've already died and went on, and you're just a ghost sitting here right now. Because the reality is you, you, you're on one side or another, playing one side or another right this minute. And we need to begin to look at it. But you know, let me just say there was here as well the conviction of a sinner. And I want to read this before we close. It says here in Nebuchadnezzar, it says, Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God, look, look at this, blessed be the God, capital G, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside, didn't obey the king's command, and yielded, sacrificed their bodies rather than serve and worship any little g god except their own big g god therefore i make a decree any people nation or language that speaks anything against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego will be torn limb from limb and their house is laid in ruins for there's no other god little g who is able to rescue in this way man he moved away from fiery firms he just gonna tear you from limb and limb just put you in and pull your arms off your legs off and tear your house down 
Everybody's bowing down. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You know? He had it, he had it in his head. He saw and he said, wow, that right there makes a difference. Listen, you know what this world needs to see? That Jesus is real. And you know how they see him? In me and you. You see, when they see who Jesus really is, when they see what real faith looks like, when they see what that's all about, they cannot deny it. You can't, you can't deny it. You, you can't deny it. The trouble is they've not seen enough of it. Too many times we're blown about like every wave in the sea. Yesterday, my boys got me to turn on a YouTube for boat mishaps on YouTube. That's their idea of a fun afternoon. <laughs> and so I'm watching this thing, and I don't know where it was. I'd never seen waves like that. I mean, these waves up, and it's tossing them boats around everywhere. I'm talking about some of them sunk. You know, they'd go down, and a boat fill up, people flying out of them. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. And they were there just, oh, yeah, did you see that? Run it back, you know. I'm going, man, I've seen it one time. Let's go it again, you know. But I couldn't help but as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, that's what the Bible says when it says that so many people are tossed to and fro with every wind and wave of doctrine. We just kind of go in wherever the wind, whatever is the popular thing. Whatever is the popular thing. Man, if it's on TikTok... I'm going to do it, right? Great day from little girls to old mamas and pot-bellied daddies <laughs> with no teeth. I, I'm just, just telling you, whatever's trending, man, I've got to get in on that. If the world's doing it, it's got to be good, right? If everybody's doing it, it's got to be good. It's got to be. If everybody says this is what it is, it's got to be. If science says this is what we should do, don't you think we should do it? I'm having a hard time trusting science right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, really. Hmm. That always, almost takes the wind out of my sail just thinking about it. But he was astonished. They were not burned up. And so that their God had delivered him. And he said, there's no God like, like your God. When's this world going to have respect for Jesus Christ? This word is when by the grace of God through Christ and the power of the Spirit, we are able to stand. To stand in the truth of our salvation and truth of God's word. I'm telling you, we've got to begin to teach our children because they're being taught. Whether you teach them or not, buddy, they're being taught. And they might be being taught right now of things you don't even know they're being taught. Because I can tell you, just as John said, there are many antichrists already in the world. They are, and they're going where? You know where they want to go? Children. <laughs> children if i can get into your college kid if i can get in your high school if i can get in your elementary school and i can tell you this is what the truth really is and it's not wow a whole generation isn't that what the bible says you know one of the saddest verses in the bibles in the old testament said and there grew up a generation that knew not god <whistles> we forget that We have got to be able to live it ourselves if we're going to teach it to our children. So the question is, do you know Jesus? Are you saved? You can't teach children how to stand in Christ if you don't know Christ. Do you know him? Can you say, yes, I've trusted in Christ as my Savior and Lord? Because it's not Jesus plus anything, it's Jesus. I mean, you know, if not, you can trust him. Just let me show you what the truth of God's Word says. And we can read this together. Look at Romans 3.23. Some of you memorize this. What, what's it say? Let's read this together. 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Does that include everybody? Yeah, it does. Look at Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says uh, here, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be. Okay, well, go back on that. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, the heart represents the heart and mind, and uh, one believes and is justified, made right before God, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So it's confession. Look at, look at verse 13, that same chapter. For everyone, let's read this together. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Right? Or Acts 16, 31, and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Believe. Or, or everybody knows this, right? John 3, 16, put it up there. Let's read it in the ESV. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Folks, that's what it means to be a believer. It's Jesus. It's believing that he died for you and took your sin, the punishment of sin, which is eternal separation of God, death. He was buried, he rose from the dead, and he's coming back. That's salvation. And it will change your life. It will transform you. And you want to grow in your faith. And I'm doing and I'm saying this to encourage you because I look at it right now and it really unnerves me because of the lies that are being told as truth. When you can't put the gender of a baby that's born in a hospital on a record, we've got trouble. Folks, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but I'm going to tell you something right now. You know good and well when that baby is born what that baby was. Was, your, was yours accurate? You see, m my problem is that's BS, bad stuff. See, I felt the vibe from some of you. It's bad stuff. It's not the truth. But yet, what are we doing? I was watching Congress. Don't, don't watch me. Listen, I, I, I wasn't on medication, but I, I wanted to be after I got through watching it. But the doctor was being there, and he, he kept saying, pregnant person. And his finance one center said, are you talking about a woman? He never would say it. He just said, pregnant person. I'm going, what, what's happening to us? Folks, listen, we need to be in solidarity for you women because you may tell you what's happening, you're being erased. You're going right back to where you don't count. And you can take that to the bank, buddy, I can tell you right now. Because now the only thing that matters is what some man says. Jesus is our salvation. You know him, you don't have to worry about what is coming because you know that even if this old world decides they want to kill us just because we name the name of Jesus, guess what? We'll be looking in the face of Jesus. The last breath of still air you breathe here will be the first breath you believe in heaven will be right in his face. And he'll be going, welcome home. And we that know Jesus have got to stand on the truth of God's word. Stop trying to put Google ahead of God's Word. God's Word is forever settled in heaven. And not one jot, not one tittle will ever, not one comma, not one period will go until Jesus comes. Do you know him? If you do, are you standing? Are you willing to stand on the truth? And you see, right now, me saying this, you know what this is called? incitement to violence 
That's what this is called right now. I'm not inciting anybody to violence. What I'm inciting people to do is Jesus. Jesus, live for Jesus. Live on the truth. We love people. We want to share the gospel with Christ. We want to help them know what it is to have the bonds burned away from them and their lives set free so that they can live as they were intended to live on this planet in the freedom of God and to burn off what this world keeps laying on us. And if you don't know Jesus, today is the day to come to know him. Trust in Christ. Would you stand with me as we pray? <clears throat> Father, <clears throat> I pray in Jesus' name. I'm just asking you, please, Father, help us to hear what your spirit is saying. I don't want, Father, anybody to leave this place misconstruing, misunderstanding anything I'm saying, but I'm wanting them to get, grasp right now the truth that this world can get worse and worse. We've got to reclaim our children. We've got to reclaim our own lives, but we've got to reclaim the truth. We've got to understand, Father, that it doesn't mean we don't enjoy ourselves or have life it just means that we're standing in Christ we still believe that Jesus is the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but by him and we don't want anyone to leave this world without Jesus it means we want to let them know about Christ it means we want to continue to help those who need help Father God we stand on the truth and we help people to see and 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 do you use us to be able to to pray away and to help people to li be delivered who don't know you from the blindness that your word says the enemy does. He blinds the minds of unbelievers so they cannot believe the gospel. So God, I'm asking for my believing brothers and sisters here that we might reaffirm our commitment to you, to the principles of truth of your word, that we will walk out of here ready to live it, not beating somebody over the head of the Bible, but to live it, to let that word ever be in our heart and our mind and on the lips that, God, when you give us opportunity, we will share in your love, speaking the truth in love, that someone might come to the Christ. But, God, I realize there might be someone in here today who doesn't know you. And, Father, you know that it's the saddest thing in the world to be with a family that has no idea whether the loved one knows Jesus or not. The sad thing to be able to live life here and waste it. So I'm asking you, Father, in Jesus' name right now, if there's someone who I'm talking to right now and you hear me as I'm praying, listen, if you've never trusted Jesus, I just read to you and you read with me. If you did, there's nobody that is going to heaven based on what they are, who they do, you know, what they are doing or whatever. The reality is without Christ, there's no going. And if you've never trusted in Jesus, if you will this very moment, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ didn't just die for your sins and was buried, but he rose from the dead. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, confess him right now. Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. Save me, forgive me, fill me with your spirit. This day I give you my life. Tell him that. Tell him that. Thank him for it. Thank him. Just tell him, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Tell him, thank you. I'm just going to ask some of my prayer warriors in here if you'll come down here to the front. If somebody needs to come, if you've trusted in Christ, listen. I hope you'll come down here and let them know, let them pray with you if you're trusting Christ this morning. And if you need prayer and you're a believer, come, let them pray with you. God is in this place. And I'm telling you, I'm praying for a revival, a spiritual awakening, and a sweep America that when the enemy thinks he's got it all wrapped up, he's going to be fooled because God's going to turn it around. To him be the glory. Father, I thank you for Jesus, every decision being made in this place. I pray, Father, that we'll not go in from here fearful, but encouraged because we know that faith in the fire, yeah, that's a faith on fire. 
And I praise you, Jesus, because it's all about you. And we ask this in your name. Amen and amen. God bless you, folks. I love you. Stay strong.